Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mackie and I hope you're all having a great day today. So we are on day number 16 of 31 days of Halloween. And so I know I said in yesterday's video that me and Kelsey would be going out doing something last night, but something came up and it just didn't work out. So I hope you guys understand, but we are going within one night this weekend. So that video will be coming, but you know, stuff comes up and it just didn't work out. So we're gonna do it either tonight, tomorrow, or Sunday, so that video is definitely coming. But today I have a super special video that I think you guys are gonna love. I was gonna do this video tomorrow, but since the, me and Kelsey didn't hang out, I figured I'd do this one today. So I have a very special guest. His name is Mason. I don't know if you guys have seen him on TikTok, but he does all of this spooky, scary ghost stuff like I do and he uploads like every single day. I'm sure you guys have seen him if you like following any spooky people. He's honestly the coolest person ever. He's one of my really good friends now. And so he's gonna be coming on right now. It's almost gonna be like a, so we're gonna be on a Zoom call and basically I'm gonna be asking him questions about his scariest stories and experiences. So I think it's gonna be super fun. I've heard some of his stories before and they are absolutely insane. And I'm gonna have all of his information to all of his social media accounts that link down to the description, so make sure you go check him out. But other than that, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so I'm here with my friend Mason, and he's gonna tell us some of his craziest ghost stories. So if you just wanna tell like what you do on TikTok, because it's super interesting to me. My name is Mason Scythe. Uh, I mainly do urban legend videos on my TikTok channel. Um, I've done urban legends from every state. I've currently in the middle of doing urban legends from your hometown where people comment where they're from and I try my best uh, to basically find something for other people to find and other people to take their friends down haunted roads or other creepy stuff during COVID so that they can uh, I guess not be so alone in this and they can feel like they can go on an adventure too rather than just watching me go and do stuff. Yeah it's super cool. I love watching those videos because most of the places, like, you have no idea that any of this stuff happened there. Like, oh, yeah. No, I honestly, that's the coolest part. Yeah, and, like, the one you did, like, the Fresno Nightcrawler, that one is crazy. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely really cool to see, um, besides just stuff that's, like, creepy cryptids or ghost sightings, I think, for me personally, the most interesting thing the haunted history of places, because some of it, I mean, some of it goes back to like 1700s, whether it's a hotel or a murder house. Um, I mean, it all, almost everything that I've done has some sort of haunted history or weird events that started to happen at one point that nobody really knows what exactly happened, but now it kind of turned itself into its own oh. haunted history, I guess. When when did you start having like your paranormal experiences? Like how did you get into all of it? Um, honestly, <laughs> it dates back probably for as long as I can remember. Um, I'm 100% positive there is my parents' house that I grew up in in San Jose is a super hot spot for for paranormal activity. Um, and for as long as I can remember, uh, since I was like five. I've heard weird demon claws scratching above my bed. I always saw different stuff. I always saw shadow figures, whether it's just outside my window, standing next to my bed. Um, so <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> but probably, <laughs> But probably the most prominent one would have to be um, the shadow man that has been seen in my parents' house. And I've seen that for as long as I can remember my parents used to like never believe me they thought I was crazy um and then other people in my house started seeing it people who would come over would start to see it um and as of just recently my parents started to see it and finally believe me <laughs> I remember you were telling me like a while ago you were saying like you didn't even know that like the shadow person you were seeing like a bunch of people have seen that same thing like all over the yeah. world like the shadow person you've seen yeah exactly I had I've heard about the Shadow Man before. I mean, obviously looking up different urban legends, that one has come up a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think I've ever actually gone into detail and done research on who exactly he is or how he even came about. And so I never knew his backstory or knew 
what he even was supposed to look like. I honestly just kind of thought it was a term that people use whenever they saw a shadow figure in their house. Mm -hmm. um, but what made this shadow figure so distinct was the fact that every time anybody saw him, everybody said that he looked the exact same. Uh, it, it was just a plain shadow figure. He had almost like a bull hat on from like the 20s. Mm -hmm. um, and the weirdest thing is he was always running down the hall, starting from like the bathroom down the hall, running down towards the living room. And he would be running, but no matter how hard he tried, you couldn't see his feet. You could never see anything past like halfway down his calf. That's so weird. Yeah, but he definitely wasn't floating. Like you could definitely tell he was running, but he wasn't floating, but he didn't have feet. That's so weird. So he was just like hauling us down the hallway, just like on a glide. Yeah, you know, honestly, it was very, very strange. And I mean, over time, I've kind of created this own theory um, with other family members about who've seen him too, uh, because there's also a lady in white who also is at the end of the hallway um, in the living room where he's always running to. And I always assumed that maybe it was like a r runaway groom or runaway bride, uh, because although I can't really see the shadow man too, too well in what he's wearing, mm. uh, the lady in white always has this really beautiful, elegant dress, also seems to be like dressed from like the 20s. Um, and it almost seems like she's looking for him and she's always looking out a window or resting her arm on the couch or something. That's crazy. Do you know like any backstory on like, like the bride and groom at all, or if anything had happened in that area that could have been related to that? Honestly, <laughs> I have no idea if anything is truly connected. The only thing I can think of is, and there's only one person that owned my parents' house before my parents that we know of. Um, he never said he saw anything. Uh, however, there is a story of this one road next to my parents' house where there was. Um, a married couple and uh, he was found cheating on her and, and so she killed him and I don't know I don't I only don't think that's related just because I don't get the same energy from these spirits as I do from this other story. But speaking of the road you were just talking about you told me some crazy stories about the road so if you want to tell any about that whatsoever about the road what you've seen there. The road is called San Felipe Road, um, and it's in San Jose, kind of on like the southeast side of San Jose, and it's almost like only truly like locals know about it, uh, but I don't feel like it gets the hype it really deserves. There's always been something that I've seen. There's never been a time, at the very, very least, there's never been a time that I've been down that road that I haven't at least felt something, felt uneasy, felt some sort of evil presence some sort of pressure in my chest. It was hard to breathe. Um, oh I've taken some friends down that road and halfway down uh, the trees start getting really thick and dense. And I've had friends who say that they feel like they're nearly on the verge of having like an anxiety or a panic attack uh, because of how just dark this force is down that road. But actually the story of uh, the guy cheating on his wife, then she killed him. She stole his white truck. Um, that story that I was just talking about um, kind of leads into San Felipe Road, because that is about that road. Um, she stole his white truck, and she was a preschool teacher, and all the way at the end of the road is a giant gate, uh, supposedly where the preschool once was, and I guess the next day when she went to work, she was still so distraught about what had just happened that she had decided to burn the whole entire preschool down with her and all the kids inside. Oh. And since then, there have been so many stories and things that people have seen down there people have seen I mean the main thing is people say that if you go to the end of that road and turn off all your car lights the mm. white truck will appear behind the gate and nobody will be in the driver's seat and it will go through the gate almost like a ghost truck it'll just go straight through it and chase you off that road um and then road is so narrow as it is so either way mm. it's it's just scary in a sense that even if it is a real car, like they are trying to get you off that road. For the hundreds of times I've been down that road, um, for the first hundred times I went down that road, I never saw the ghost truck. I never been chased by it. I've seen some weird ghosts. I saw 
this the ghost of like an old lady walking around at the very very end at midnight which is weird because for people who know that road there's there's no houses down that road there's no anything there's no reason why anybody should just be casually walking at the end of this road at midnight and that's like honestly even more scary because it's an old lady yeah, honestly like, it's the worst <laughs> yeah no seriously it's, it's, yeah it's like why <laughs> if it even was like a real old lady like she has no business <laughs> being there at night and but I never believed in the ghost truck thing. I believed it. I believed other people's stories, but I couldn't really believe it for myself um, until one time it actually did happen. It was when I was 16, like first got my license or shortly after, because, you know, I've been down there so many times before that. Um, but that was so pivotal. And like, that was probably like a very real adrenaline rush in terms of paranormal experience, as opposed to what I'd previously seen just growing up with at my parents' house. Mm. Uh, and once then it basically went exactly as like the legend goes, the truck comes, it drives to the gate, tries to chase you off the road. And there's no other road that can lead you off that road for like at least a couple miles down. Mm-hmm. And I'm <laughs> I kept telling my friend to like check the rear view mirror, look behind him to see if it's still following us. And I would check my rear view mirror and see. And at one point I checked, I looked down, it was still there. I checked again, it was completely gone. And mm-hmm. no idea where it could have went. There's no other road it could have gone down. I couldn't sleep that night. (laughs) Oh my god, that's so weird because, like, even if it, like, went to make a U-turn and turn around, like, you would have been able to see it turning around, right? Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, for how long this truck was, too, and even for just, like, my little car, like, it's so hard to make a U-turn on that road because it is so narrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you see the truck, like, any more times besides that one? I've seen it once more, but only in a video that my friend took, who I was there with him, but we didn't see the truck in real life pass by us, but we caught it on video. Wait, what? You and that's probably, like, the strangest thing. So you do have a video of the truck? Yes, I do have the video. Um, I asked my friend to send it to me, because originally... We weren't even going ghost hunting, and the weirdest thing was it was in broad daylight. It was probably like 4 p.m. Honestly, sometimes whenever I'm driving down a desolate road or I know there aren't any cars, mm. uh, I don't know why, but I kind of developed this habit into like sticking my foot out the window, <laughs> like my left foot like out the window, like kind of like hanging or resting on the rear or the side mirror. Uh-huh. Um, and he just thought that was so funny, and so he did the same thing and decided to record it. And recorded his foot out the window and then showed me mm. with my foot out the window. And in that moment, you can see the white truck driving by. And I've slowed it down a million times. I've like screenshot it the whole way through. And the weirdest part is well, one, you can definitely tell it's a truck. You can see the front of it, you can see the lights, you can see the grill, you can clearly see the door, the door handle. Um, but the weirdest part is when zooming in on it, you can clearly see the headrest and there's absolutely no possible way that anybody is in there driving that car. That is insane. And it even looks like it's like, has like a dream filter on it where like, it's just very wispy and it's, it doesn't even look real, but it looks real. (laughs) That is so crazy. So I'll insert that clip like right here. Just, like, the fact, too, that you didn't even see the truck, like, driving in person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm down that road. Um, is one time I took one of my friends down that road with me um, in the daytime, or probably around sunset time. And uh, we decided to put the Ouija board down that road and see if we could find anything, find someone to talk to, see if it was getting in touch with the spirit, yeah. the spirit of the kids, the spirit of the woman, the spirit of the husband. I don't think we contacted them, uh, but however, the weirdest part about it was when we, when we started playing with it, the second, like, we started, it just immediately went and spelled the word hog, like, H-O-G, like an animal, 
And we're like, okay, that's weird. And before we could even have a chance to ask another question, it itself just went straight to goodbye. So we're just kind of like, okay, that's weird. Like, whatever. It's probably telling us that we probably shouldn't be doing this right now. Mm-hmm. Now's not the time. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we went back. And later that night, I took somebody else down that road because they wanted to go driving down that road. So the same day, um, just a couple hours later at night, I was taking another friend and she was actually the one who was driving. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at my phone, texting my friend who I just played the Ouija board with. Oh. And the person driving immediately just stopped the car halfway down that road, just slammed on the brakes and started screaming. And I look up because I'm all freaked out. I'm like, what happened? Like, what do you see? And in the middle of this road, there's a giant black hog with red eyes and giant tusks. Mm-hmm. And it just looked like it was bleeding. It looked like its fur was like patchy. It looked like it had been ripped off. It looked, it was just so much bigger than any other hog-like animal I've ever seen. And there aren't literally any animals down that road except for like deer. You'll see deer down that road because it's a very foresty road. But I've never seen a hog down that road before. I've never seen a pig or any, anything else down that road except for deer. That's so crazy, and I don't know if this is even right at home, but aren't, like, pigs, like, demonic in a way, like, a symbol for, like, demons? That's what I was thinking. I'm like, okay, like, this, like, it has to be, like, some, like, possessed, like, hog, I guess, because, one, I've never seen a hog with glowing red beady eyes. Yeah, never. Let alone, right? Let alone with, like, black, tattered fur. So... Other than the hog, I think you told me a story about, like, some other weird animal thing you saw down there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there, there was once, only, I've only seen this, like, twice, um, and there, it's not too long of a story, but also down that road, there's really big hills on the side, um, and a couple of times I've seen this creature and I've had other people with me, so I'm not the only one. <laughs> uh, but it's like half wolf, half man is kind of like the best way I can describe it. It would sometimes walk on two legs and sometimes walk on all four legs. And it looked like it was like eight feet tall and it was like crawling but walking at the same time up the side of the mountain and I've seen him like twice and it's very very quick he very quickly runs but just long enough to see that it is not a wolf but not human but just a mix of something in between oh my god that literally sounds like an actual werewolf or skinwalker or something like that yeah. oh my god oh my god what <laughs> there, there's definitely been um there's a only been an experience uh, with a skinwalker as well since moving to Arizona. So where I live in, Ar- in Arizona, um, there's a road called Mission Road, um, which is it's following the freeway, um, taking you to and from Tucson. Uh, and it, it connects to a reservation. That's kind of like when I first started learning about what a skinwalker was. I had a friend tell me about it, and I haven't really heard about them or heard about them in detail at least um so it was definitely a new cryptid for me to learn about um and as he was telling me this he was saying we should go down mission road at night and because no matter what it's just a creepy road in general and i was like sure like i'm totally down and it was about maybe two almost three in the morning and i see this thing like crawling not crawling but walking and limping right next to the car and it looks like every single time it, it's taking a step it's it's breaking a bone like that's what it looks like it looks so decrepit and it looks like it could barely stand it's like kind of like moving like a weird up and down bone breaking type of way oh my god and i didn't know what the hell this thing was at first i couldn't even i don't even know how to explain it immediately after that it walked right in front of the car and every step it took was a good three yards. And so once it was finally in front of the car, I could clearly see that this thing was like 10 feet tall. It was super, super skinny. It looked like it was made out of nothing but bone. And I couldn't see its face. Its face wasn't facing me. Um, 
and it just immediately darted off into the distance. And I was like, what the hell is that? And mm-hmm. immediately started freaking out and kind of just like stopped on the side of the road and was like, okay, trying to just like, you know, like gather my surroundings, <laughs> like what the hell just happened? Um, and I drew, I drove up a little further mm-hmm. and I see that there's these blood stains on the road mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, this is really weird. And so we turn around and kind of go back to the spot where we last saw it yeah. uh, or where we last saw it disappear, run off into the middle of the desert. Mm-hmm. And in the middle of the desert on the side of the road, there was this cow and it was, it was dead but there was no tire tracks on it. Like, it didn't look like it had gotten run over. It didn't look like anybody had shot it or anything. There was no puncture wounds. There was no tire tracks or anything. But the only thing that was really distinct about this was the cow was bleeding out of its eyes and out of its mouth. But the rest of it was, like, in perfect contact, like, as it had, as if it just died. How does that even happen? So it's, like, internally something... I don't know. Okay, that's really weird. But I have a friend who's Native American, and she was telling me that she was telling me more about these creatures and that they shape shift and everything that I was explaining to her about this creature. She said that it was definitely a skinwalker, um, mm-hmm. and she was telling me all these other different things. That was super interesting. Like I guess on the reservation, you're not allowed to like whistle past sundown because I guess that could like summon them. You're not supposed to say their names. It's it's really really crazy. I don't know if like I know. <laughs> watching this has like even knows what a skinwalker is, but are there like any pictures specifically that you think like represents the one that you saw the most? I'm gonna insert the picture right here of what Mason thinks it looks or resembles the most. As for the head in this picture. I, I don't know how accurate that is just because it was it was too tall. It was standing way above the car's headlights. Um, so I don't know how accurate the head of this picture is, but the rest of it is definitely probably the closest thing that I can say that it looked like. Um, mm. But I've also heard that they can shape shift into many other different things. And I don't know if that affects, uh, I guess, their main form. Mm. It's the so. picture that you like, that was like so creepy and unsettling to me yeah <laughs> I saw that thing oh my god I'd I'd like go straight home <laughs> no I definitely did we definitely went just straight home and I mean obviously there's a part of me that like wants to go back and like find it again just so I can learn more or maybe actually catch it on camera this time but <laughs> I mean I but with the stories I've heard about it and like how just I guess brutal this cryptid is is something that I definitely don't want to get too ballsy with so I think we're gonna wrap up the stories here but you definitely need to come back like next week or the week after so we can do a part two because I know you have so many other stories that are just insane Definitely. Yeah, (laughs) definitely. I've never heard anything like your stories. Usually it's just like people like, oh my gosh, like I saw this in my house or this moved in my house, but you actually have like insane ones. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) definitely definitely shaped um, my beliefs in the supernatural today and kind of led me to be more open and find more stuff about it and what all this stems from and what it means. If you want to like tell everyone what your TikTok is so they can go watch all your stuff because all of your content is literally so good. So yeah, you can follow me uh, at Mason Scythe on TikTok um, where I post usually two times a day. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Mason Scythe, same thing. Um, and on Twitter, Mason Scythe. Uh, I usually post around stupid stuff on there. And uh, mm-hmm. I actually just made a second uh, TikTok account at mm-hmm. Official Scythe, uh, kind of where I post just like, daily stuff, stupid stuff, random trends, something, anything that is basically non-paranormal really. But thank you so much for coming on and telling your stories. I seriously love all of them so much. They're some of my favorites.
<laughs> oh, Mackie, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. I can't wait to come back. This is awesome. Yeah. Okay, so that's all for today, but I hope you guys did enjoy Mason and his stories. Like I said before, you have to go check him out on TikTok. He posts the most incredible content every single day. So all of his stuff will be linked down below. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. And also look forward to, for part two with Mason because he's coming back real soon with some more insane stories. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you tomorrow. Peace.